Wait, check this out. <laughs> but that sounds so nice too. I don't know why. It just uh, sounds so relaxing. Uh, <laughs> uh, a a a ASR, ASMR. Hey, plane. Let's go down here. My mom used to drive me to school uh, when I was in elementary school and blast "Ludicrous Move, Bitch." What? And really? And sing it. She, yeah, she, she'd She's be like, "No, bitch, get out of the way." And you want to get into doing movies, right? Like you wake up in the middle of the night, you have some dreams, yeah. and you write them down. Yeah, I said that in an interview a while ago, and then like, and then uh, I kind of stopped doing it for a while because my mind started <laughs> just getting so all over the place. I just do so much shit at the same time that I go crazy, and then. I lock myself away. My mom's gay, she's been gay forever, and she broke us the news, as she says, when we were younger. Hey, so today I'm here with Getter. Hey, <laughs> what's up? So you were born in San Jose, right? San Jose, California, the Bay oh. Area. What were you like growing up? Uh, I was loud as fuck, uh, but also quiet. I was loud with my friends, but I was quiet in public. I loved Legos and shit. Yeah. And I like to cook. I like to organize shit. <laughs> um, organize. Yeah, I know it sounds weird. I've never weird. heard anyone describe their childhood wasn't, like. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm just super into I was organizing. never. I was never active, so my dad ended up paying me like thirty bucks a week to do cross country. Hey, wait, that's crazy. Yeah, it was cool. Some good money. Bought some more Legos. How old were you, like, around this time? I don't know, like, 12? No, 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 I was 14 for sure. Yeah. 14, 15. Some shit. Where do you get your energy from? Adderall. I'm just kidding. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> Adderall <laughs> and a lot of water. And I don't do drugs anymore, and I don't... I rarely drink, so it's kind of just... Go to bed, wake up early, eat, drink hella water, and then I'm energetic. But are your parents super, like, energetic also? My parents, yeah. My dad is, like, 5'8", and, like, super hyper. He's hilarious. And my mom's kind of laid back. So you got her sense of humor from your dad then? Yeah, I'd like to say so. Maybe. Somewhat. How about siblings? Yeah, siblings. Wait, check this out. <laughs> Wait, that sounds so nice, too. I don't know why. It just uh, sounds so relaxing. Uh, uh, a a ASR? ASMR? A yeah, I literally was going to say that. I didn't forgot the correct acronym. <laughs> Um, no, yeah, I got a little brother who's like a dope skater. He lives in Oregon. And then my older brother uh, is also a dope skater slash biker slash inventor slash he just does everything. He's in Oregon, too. And he has a wife named Kylie. Mm -hmm. Older brother's name's Dylan. Younger brother's name's Brody. And they're my, they're my dogs. <laughs> what kind of music did your parents play when you were growing up? Uh... <laughs> So much different shit. My dad would play like the lame shit, Dave Matthews, Bob Dylan, whatever. I mean, Bob Dylan is not lame, but at the time it was yeah. lame when I was younger. Hey, playing. Let's go down here. Then my mom would play Indigo Girls, Melissa Etheridge, um, Bright Eyes, a bunch of cool shit. They both played cool shit, some lame shit too, but my mom used to drive me to school uh, when I was in elementary school and blast Ludacris Move Bitch. What? And really? And sing it. She, yeah, she, she'd She's be like, no, bitch, get out of the way. So all no the cars way. would get out. And then I remember <laughs> she bought me uh, M&M's, some Shady LP, Marshall Mathers LP, uh, M&M show. Basically all the shit, but then Damn. I had to get it edited. Yeah. So How was she so, she, was she always like in tune with the times? Yeah, like, she was just down. Damn. She was super down. It was cool. She introduced me to a lot of shit. So did my dad, though, and my brothers. What do they do? My mom, she's, I know she's into fitness and nutrition and shit. And my dad uh, used to work at Cisco. But I know he moved companies. I don't know where he works now. But it's an important, it's a manager of some shit. So mm -hmm. it got to be pretty important. Where do you think you got your creative side from, then? Mostly your mom? Yeah, I think my mom's side, like my uncle. My mom's brother, John, is like one of the only musicians in our family. Oh, wow. So, yeah, he plays guitar uh, for, I think he used to play for Charlie, Charlie Musselwhite, mm -hmm. and now he plays for, I wanna, what's his name, Wayne Newton? I don't know, some dude from Vegas, but yeah. he lives in Vegas and performs there, and that's where my mom tells me I get my music from. Did he help you out or, like, kind of mentor you in a certain way? Uh, not really. When I was younger, he taught me how to play some songs on guitar, like acoustic guitar, just, like, Smoke on the Water and Iron Man, everyone's first songs, but he's definitely... 
seeing what he did, because I know where him and my mom came from, and it wasn't shitty, but, like, that kind of inspired me to mm -hmm. do my thing, too. Other than music, what kind of, like, hobbies were you into or, like, subjects? I loved to skate, but I fucked up my Achilles tendon, so oh. I had to stop, and then I did more music, so it was good. I like interior designing, but I never really pursued it. I just like organizing rooms and shit. I like, like, my house right now just looks like a house from like Ren and Stimpy or Rocco's Modern Life or something. Oh my god. I like to make shit on Photoshop. I like to design clothes. Uh, I like to make food. I like cars. I've got an R8 and I've just been like souping it up since I got it. One of the recent things you had with this kid was like on SoundCloud. You said that your mom's gay. My mom's gay. She's been gay forever. And she broke us the news, as she says, when we were younger. But, like, it wasn't a big deal to us because they raised us, like, everyone's equal, so. Were you surprised or anything, or? Well, I mean, they How got. How old were you back then? Oh, fuck. Oh, I want to say around 10 or 11. But, honestly, I was more tripping about my dad smoking cigarettes than my mom being really? gay. I didn't really care. Yeah. The yeah. only thing we tripped about, like, me and my brothers, when she told us was that they lied to us and said they're getting divorced for a different reason. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, my mom's gay. She's super happy and dope and uh i'm happy that she's cool and gay do you think you've like grown closer to it now that you like know and she's able to open up about like her self or like relationships and stuff to you yeah totally i grew up uh uh i would like live a week with her a week with my dad like on and off with my brothers and uh yeah she would always like all of her friends were gay and they were the nicest people ever and never wouldn't hurt a fly and my mom i remember the day she told us she was like breaking down and we're like yo it's cool like we're not assholes we're kids like mm -hmm. we, we kind of don't get it but we kind of do but i'm yeah i'm glad it's cool i'm i'm glad she's happy with herself yeah and i'm happy for her for yeah. that when you were 19 you moved here were they like skeptical or were they what was it like for them um well, it got to the point where, like, I got out of high school and I was still doing music, doing shows. And then I got a job at a smoke shop. And I was going to community college that my dad was paying for because I didn't want to go. So I wasn't going to pay. <clears throat> what were you studying? Uh, nothing. I literally wanted to do music. So they put me in, like, a music program, which was cool. But then there was, like, five bullshit classes that I just never went to. So yeah. my dad was basically paying for me to not go to school. And I just kept not going for the longest time. And then one day I was just like, you know what, like... I don't want to do this. This is lame. I'm making stacks at shows. I'm making music. I'm going to move to LA. And they were kind of like iffy about it at first. And then I just bought a car and I was like, hey, I'm moving on this day. Drove down here with all my shit in my Jetta, 2001 Jetta. It was dope. And uh, yeah, I just started going. But I think they were worried at first, but um, they go around. They slowly go around. Do you ever regret that, or do you still think, like, oh, like, that's 100% the way that you still do it now? No, I've, I don't fucking like school. I'm not a fan of school. I mean, I get it. I get why people go. If you want to be a doctor or therapist or whatever, school's for you. But, like, if you're creative, I feel like school's the devil because you can't go to school. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't teach art. You can't. Like, you're either born with it or you're not, and you have to explore it. And you, you could learn shit on the way. If you want to paint, you can learn how to sh do different strokes, how to blend shit better, different tools to use. But no one's going to teach you how to paint because you, it should be programmed in your body already. That's what I believe. Yeah. So I'm not a huge fan of school, especially high school. Fuck high school. <laughs> Go for your parents, oh and God. that's it. Doesn't matter. You will never use any knowledge from high school ever. When you were starting out, did you have someone guide you when you were, like, 18, 19? Someone you looked up to or a mentor? Yeah, that's sick. He was, like, I looked at, he was, like, my fucking idol. And That's pretty early on. Well, you had, what, like, three, four years when you started music until you found him? Yeah, yeah, the, we, we, we talked for a bit. He ended up releasing my music on his new label and put me on tour. And I still remember the, I was just with him the other day, and I still remember the first day I stepped on his bus, and they're all watching TV, and I was, like, Never met this dude. I'm fanning out in my head. I'm oh freaking out. I'm on a tour bus. I'm fucking 18 or 19. I forgot. But yeah, it was cool. He definitely helped me along the way and like pointed me. And then I met the Ausel boys and they helped a lot with like getting everything in my brain out in the open, which was really cool. So your parents weren't that supportive or how did you gain their support? No, they were supportive. They just kind of like, 
I feel like it was weird at first because they didn't understand it because it was new. It still is new. It wasn't mm -hmm. like, yo, I'm going to be a rapper. I'm going to be in a band. It was like, hey, I'm going to press play uh, for a bunch of kids. And so they were like iffy. But they were definitely supportive. Now they're stoked. My dad comes to like all my Vegas shows. It's super funny. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So they were chill when you were like back in the band days. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess, I, I guess it's something that they were they knew more about than like the yeah. whole electronic scene. Yeah. I, I had like metal bands and shit with my friends, nothing serious. But like my dad let us set up like a thing in the back garage oh, beat cool. or pool house area and we just like would jam all the time. Like for social media. Because when did you start like focusing on it? Um, when I met Nick Coletti. Mm -hmm. my, he's my roommate now. He was going to come with, but, uh, wait, I want to lime. Uh, Got it. Um, yeah, he was going to come with, but I think he's working on music today. It was right around the time of the Head Splitter music video. I met him. He messaged me on Twitter. Or no, I followed him, or he followed me. I don't know, some shit, but one of us messaged each other on Twitter and was like, hey, I like your music. Or no, I was like, yo, your videos are funny, because I was doing Vine. Uh... And then he messaged back, and then he's like, yo, I'm in your city, let's hang out. And I was like, word. And then he came over, we hung out, and then we were best friends. And then he moved in with us, us being my ex-girlfriend and my mm -hmm. homie. And then we just lived together ever, ever since. But he always will just give me, like, advice. He'll be like, yeah, like, like he's like, that's, that's cool, and that's targeted to your audience. But, like, fuck that. Just do what you think is funny, because other people will think it's funny. And ever since I started doing that, it's like... It's gotten better. It's yeah. gotten way better. Do you think there are any disadvantages to it? Like, do yeah. you think any like music people don't take you as seriously or like? Yeah, labels? for sure. I think e okay. There's different parts of it because like making electronic dance music, it's it's gotten itself such a bad rep in all the other markets because it's like, oh, you make music on a computer. Oh, okay. You press play. You don't play an instrument. Blah blah blah. All this shit. So that affects if I want to work with like any hip hop people. Like it, it gets to the point where like the only people in hip hop I can work with are like personal homies or like somebody I met because if I go to hit somebody up and tell them to work they're like you do EDM no but then it's the same with the social media because I've been doing music almost eight years and I'm fucking good at it and I know I'm good at it but no one will take you seriously if they know you from Vine or like YouTube you know so like I would do vlogs and Vining and all this shit and then I would put my heart into a song and put it out and then people are just on it talking about sud dude and talking about like funny shit and it's cool, I get it, as long as they know the name, right? But I'd appreciate them to appreciate the music more. Yeah. If that makes sense. But a lot of people who come to our concerts now are from their social media, right? Yeah, which Was is, I think it's like really good. Brace, like, bridge them over to, like, what do you actually want, the music? No, I'm kind of just, I, pay, I don't really pay attention to what the followers, like, obviously I pay attention to what they say because mm -hmm. I fucking roast people on the daily no i don't really care about what they listen to of mine just because i make everything now mm -hmm. and as long as they're there and their ears are open and they're paying attention to me and hearing what i'm playing or like listening to me in their phone i don't really care like if i'm converting them to from comedy to this because if they fuck with me they'll fuck with what i'm making yeah you know what i mean yeah it's really cool yeah. for the trippy burger stuff um when you first started out, there weren't too many, like, artists making their own clothing, right? Yeah. Yeah, we, I mean, we started, we did it just for a quick buck. It was like, yo, we need to put Saudi shirts out. And it did make us quite a few quick bucks. Yeah. But then it was like, okay, Whose let's idea? actually do, idea? yeah, it was my idea, yeah. me and my manager. Actually, no, it was my manager's idea. He actually did the Saudi thing, because Saudi was around a year before it blew up. And then my manager blew it up by posting it on my Facebook. And then he's like, okay, now we make shirts. So it came together, and then I put out the head splitter video. Uh, that was either before or after, but that is where the Tribu Burger name came from, because in that video, I eat a burger and I trip balls. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so now it's in Zoomies, and we're, I think, I also have the Shred clothing, which is going to be more of all the shit I wear. Tribu Burger is more of like funny, cool, artsy shit. So. For the artsy stuff, do you have like an artist that you look up to or you're inspired by? Yeah, I'm like, I literally the other day unfollowed everyone on every social media platform except for visual artists because I'm so obsessed with art. Yeah. And I'm, a, I, I'm an artist too, I can draw shit, and, but I'm not as good as these other guys. So I oh. literally like follow like I think 80 to 90 or some, some number like that. And I just, I'll hit them up individually and be like, dude, 
Name a price, I don't give a fuck. Your shit is awesome and it perfectly represents what I'm doing in people's headphones. So if we can do music and visuals the same, let's do it. Do you have, so you don't have any shirts right now that you drew it yourself? No, not really. I have, I mean, I, I, like I do like... so keen to see that. Yeah, I mean, I do a few, like, I just don't say like, yo, I made this, you know? Yeah. <laughs> There's a bunch of shit. I've, I got an iPad with Procreate, so I've just, oh, I'll draw cool. shit on there. Yeah, but like, that's the new shit for Shred. It'll just be like quick shit, you know? Kind of like Supreme, because... I've been obsessed with Supreme since I was like 16. For your Tread Collective, like the main idea is that you didn't want to be rich by yourself. You wanted everyone else to like yeah. have a fair share. Oh, Where did that um, mentality come from? Well, I noticed when all my shit started go. you know, like everybody's been down in the dumps. Like it doesn't matter if you have or you haven't, but like sometimes you got to sell shit to pay rent. Sometimes you got to do this, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, all the people that call themselves your best friends not saying that best friends should give you handouts all the time, but like they see what you're going through and they don't even offer to help. So like, I feel like instead of it being a business record label or this and blah, 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 and this person makes this money, blah, blah, blah. It's like, if you make a song and you like it and you want to put it out to the audience, we'll put it out and you get all the money because that's fair and it'll put some money in your pocket. You know what I mean? Like we do these sample pack deals and I just give all the money to the people who I do the sample pack with. It's just like, I don't know, I feel like if I had a bunch of money, but my best friend was broke, I would spend all my money trying to make them happy by including them in shit anyway. Like, yo, let's go to Six Flags. I got you on a ticket. So why not just meet in the middle and be like, hey, I'm going to make you money so we can go to Six Flags at the same time. Mm -hmm. I don't have to buy you a ticket. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, call it karma, call it whatever, but I just feel like everyone deserves a slice of the pie. Yeah. Did you get this idea yourself or was this something that you like saw online and like, oh wait, I could like do something similar? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was really just like, like I write a bunch of shit down on my computer and my phone and shit and I'll just like, like jot down notes of ideas or songs or lyrics or whatever and that was one of them and then I just, we kind of built off it and then I've always wanted to have something called shred because that word is fucking dub. <laughs> And you want to like open, was it a store for it, like down the road? Yeah, oh, I think no, RIP. It's, it's cool. My hands smell like lime now, it's chill. Um, yeah, I, we, we're going to do pop-up stores. Uh, hopefully s different spots on my tour, on the Big Mouth tour, get your fucking tickets. Mm -hmm. And uh, do some pop-up shops, have some guests. But we want to open up a retail store 2018 in L.A. permanently. Oh, and sick. But I want to do it in a different area because everyone's on Fairfax and Melrose, but like... We want a block, you know, people got their blocks, we want one. So yeah, we're gonna have that and it'll be like everyone there all the time chilling, kind of like an office. Upstairs will be an office. And then, yeah, we'll sell some clothes, meet some peeps. Yeah. It'll be fun. For your Tara Reid stuff, like the Who Dat song is so good. Thanks. I listened to it so much, like when I was still in Hong Kong. Did you always like rap before? Or was it just kind of like a recent thing? No, I, before, like I, I remember I was in the studio with my homie uh, and Andy Milanakis. It was, it's, as weird as that sounds, my friend was friends with him and my friend couldn't rap, so I was like, all right, I'll write you something. And then I, I wrote it and I was like, wait, that's kind of tight. And so I just started to like then you randomly. Realize and you're like, ah. Yeah, that was like a couple years ago. And then I started to kind of just do it myself. And then when I met Puya and Fat Nick and all those guys, they were like I was always in the studio with them recording. And I would see how they work, how they would like loop the beat, listen to it, and get the flow down before the words and all this stuff. And so I started to do that. And then I made one song as Tara Reed as a joke. I say as a joke loosely because like it was serious, but it wasn't. But like, yeah, and then it just started to stack up. And then I got to the point where I'm like, damn, I know how to do this better than any of these motherfuckers. And that's not me being a dick. That's just like, mm -hmm. I'm confident in what I do. I mean, not better than Puya. All the guys I work with are way better than me. I'm talking like, like, I want to be in an interview with Joe Budden and kill him in a freestyle. Like oh shit like God. that. You know what I mean? Like, like I can do that. Yeah. I know I can do that shit. Yeah, so it kind of just blossomed. And actually, Who Dat wasn't actually supposed to come out because, uh... I didn't like it. I still don't like it that much. The wordplay is just not what I wanted it to be. I feel like it was just, I don't know, for me when I listened to that, it was just like the cross between I could hear it's you, but then also rap. And I feel like I never heard anything like that type of rap, but the fact, I don't know, it was just super cool. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I'm, st I'm proud of the song. It was originally just a beat I was supposed to give to someone, but um, 
Yeah, we just wanted to put a song out. We meaning me and my manager. But yeah, next year is going to be a bunch of big Tara Reed stuff. What was the reason behind not putting that out as Getter? Well, the original idea was because, okay, Getter is, everybody knows it for EDM comedy, right? And like, I'm proud of that and it's cool, but I don't want to bring that energy into hip hop because I don't want some more fake whack shit or like fans thinking they like something when in reality they like the other thing that this dude's doing. So it was originally supposed to be me in a ski mask and anytime I like get fucked up, cause I like the shock rap stuff. Like that makes you like, oh fuck, he just said that. So like it was supposed to be like, I drink bleach and I turn into Tara Reid or some shit like that. And we did it for a while and it was cool. And then after a bit, I'm like, dude, like I want, I want people to see my face and the expressions I'm making when I'm saying these, all this fucked up shit, you know? And it's like, I, I can see hip hop, hip hop more long term than EDM and I would be more happy with mm -hmm. it because it's got replay value and people will listen to it more instead of yeah. just putting out an EP, having people listen to it for a week and then ask you what's next. So you kind of keeping it close. But yeah, I don't think we're gonna do the mask thing anymore, maybe here and there, but. What was the original idea behind the mask? Like you just didn't want to know people's, people to know it's you? Yeah, it was, um, it was really just like, I was self-conscious about all like rapping and stuff because mm -hmm. it wasn't where I wanted it to be yet so I put it on and then I just wanted to speed things up and then I actually made custom masks but then it started getting like futures got the mask off thing uh, there's ski mask the slump god there's yeah. little toe who wears a ski mask there's all these people wearing ski masks I'm like dude I don't want to blend in with the crowd like fuck it I'll just be another white kid with tattoos that raps so yeah, and the lyrics that better. you want are like pretty, you want to do more of like the old style of lyrics, right? Yeah, I want to just bring it back. I want to make the old dudes sound new and the new dudes sound old. Like I, I just want, I want to bring it back to the good shit because like the new shit's cool, but it's not hip hop, dude. It's rap and like, that's cool, whatever. Rap about your lean and your fucking mm -hmm. Xanax and how much money you get. But at the end of the day, like I make the shit I want to hear and that's it. And my favorite rappers are like Necro, Eminem, uh, MF Doom, that whole like era. So I wanna make some violent shit. I wanna make some like shit that makes people talk like Molly Percocet, dude, like cool. You, you do drugs, that's really sick. But I fucking huff donkey shit or like mm -hmm. I snort anthrax, like shit like that. It's just like way more unbelievable. It's like the difference between a documentary and like Michael Bay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the difference between Michael Moore and Michael Bay. Like, Michael Moore is basic, stick into the guidelines, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not crazy out of this world, but Michael Bay, you're like, what the fuck? There's so many explosions, so I'm Michael Bay. <laughs> I like that. Does that make sense? And you want to get into doing movies, right? Like, you wake up in the middle of the night, you have some yeah. dreams, and you write them down. Yeah, I said that in an interview a while ago, and then, like, and then uh, I kind of stopped doing it for a while because my mind started just getting so all over the place. I just do so much shit at the same time that I go crazy and then I lock myself away, finish everything, then I come out like born again, kind of. <laughs> but that was one of the things I would do. It's, happen it's starting to happen again, but I'll basically like, if I'm working, a song, working on a song all day, every day, by the end of the day, it's all that's in my head and I'll wake up with it in my head still. So I usually dream about it and then I'll like have uh, ideas for music videos and movies. I really want to, like what Tyler the Creator does is so cool because yeah. he does exactly what he wants, doesn't give a fuck what anyone says, makes like visually, but it's all dope because he's knocked off the whole like, are people gonna like this? Mm -hmm. He's just like, I like this, it's cool, I'm putting it out. So I wanna do that kind of shit. I wanna be able to, I have like over 30 music video ideas yeah. that we're definitely gonna do, but. but how about movies? I would love to do movies. What I think, movies I'm sure everybody would say comedy, but I would love to be behind the scenes. Like I was okay. talking about, I'm not gonna say who, but me and my homie were talking about making a movie. And he's like, yeah, you can be one of the actors. I'm like, I mean, I'll write some of it. I'm, I'm funny, I can write jokes, but like, I don't want, everybody mistakes me for the guy that wants all the attention and like the center of everything. But like, that was a mistake in a, like the best possible mistake because now I got everything that I want and I'm doing more, but I like being behind the scenes. I wanna be the guy making beats for people and you know, just getting money, more money than other people would because I'm doing what I like. And then with the Tara Reid thing, I'm trying to push a wave and start people to do this style. And then eventually I'll just be like, all right, 
I'm gonna make all the beats now. Yeah. But I would love to direct and write. I can see you do that. It'd be super It'd be sick. Fun. Yeah. It'd be super fun. You tweeted like a while ago some like that you wanted to get out of like the electronic or electronic scene. Yeah. Can you elaborate more on that? Or like fake people and. Yeah, there's just like I'm not gonna. There's some people that have fucked me in this industry, and I'm sure everybody, lots of people get fucked by a lot of people. I'm not gonna say who because they know what they did. Like it's not, it's no use calling them out, but. It's just like, I like, I'm kind of emo on the internet because I want people to know what I'm going through and hear what I'm hearing and shit. And so I'm vocal about it, but I make it simple. But like that whole thing just came from for the longest time. Like, I'll make music and it takes forever, and then I put it out. People give a fuck, and then they don't give a fuck, and then it's like, what do you got next? And it's like, oh shit, uh, I'm not a clothing brand. I don't just drop shit. You know, I gotta work. Yeah. And so I just started getting tired of people people underappreciating my shit. And then I started to think about how I make that kind of music for a certain scenario to play out. Because, like, if you listen to that in headphones, it's, I'm sure it's not as good as it playing live. But I make everything. So now it's like, okay, I can either do this EDM thing and make a bunch of money and make pointless fucking music. That'll be popular for a little bit. Or I can take that energy and combine it with this better energy where I'm making the shit that I like. That's I like to call real music because... Uh, it's more composed and makes you think a little bit more. And it's about certain shit. You could cry to it. You could laugh to it. So it's like all these people are bummed saying I'm quitting and all this stuff. It's like I'm not quitting. I worded it wrong. I'm just changing and moving on. Yeah. And I'm still going to, you know, make party shit. But it's not top priority. Instead of like two or three EPs for me a year, maybe you'll see a couple singles. But then the rest of it is like anywhere music. You don't need to be at a party. You could ride your bike and listen to it. You can fucking take a shit and listen to it. I just, I just want people to know that I'm here and I'm staying, but like, I'm not doing what everybody wants me to do. And if I lose everything, I don't care because it's what I want to do. Yeah. You know. Last question: What do you want to be remembered for? I want to be the that guy who made every kind of music, and uh, made beats for everyone, and. I just want to be the shit. I want to be like, mm -hmm. yo. I just want to be a legend. I want to be. Jimi Hendrix, I want to be <laughs> fucking Flying Lotus, I want to be all these guys that made an imprint and you will never forget them because people forget EDM artists real quick mm. because I've been there, I've been doing this shit eight years, I know so I just don't want to be forgotten and yeah. I, want to, I want to be that dude I want yeah. to be that boy <laughs> Thank you so much yeah, Thank you Bye.